What's up guys, my name is Khan and we're back today with more Railroads Online and today I wanted to try and get to the coal mine. I feel like it's a necessary adventure and if we take a look at our map here, we have the freight depot, logging camp, sawmill, smelter, and iron ore mine all connected. So we're obviously at the sawmill right now with our wonderful Eureka and what I want to try and do today is make our way to the coal mine. Now that's a really really long path. I think we're gonna have to follow that valley on the right side, but what I wanted to do, at least for now, is just sort of trailblaze the path. So I first want to go check out the coal mine, see what height it's at, and then actually start, like, you know, demolishing some trees and laying out some rough foundation. I'm not gonna actually lay out any track or anything. I just want to see, like, what kind of elevation changes we need, how steep the line would have to be, and that sort of thing to, you know, actually get to the coal mine. And then we'll probably do another episode once we've got a path figured out where we go back and actually cover the path with rails and a proper foundation bridges, whatever we actually need. To be honest, I've never even looked at the coal mine. I don't even know how it's laid out on the map. So we're going to get going here right away uh, with Gutless. With, with, we're going to get going right away with, with, gut. we're going to get going. We're going to, we're going to, no, we're, we're just, we're not, any time now, any, 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 any time, no, let's, let's, let's just go, and re yeah, that's great, can we, can we get going now, can we, can we, we're gonna get going right away with Gutless, and, uh, it's gonna be great, we're gonna head down to the sort of spot where I think it would make sense to turn off, it's actually gonna be up on the way to the iron mine, but through the other direction. We're going to eventually need to figure this all out because we're going to have trains going like the wrong way and colliding with each other potentially, which might be a problem. But I think there's a spot where we could diverge it off the iron line, the iron mine line. That's, geez, that's a tongue twister. But yeah, we could diverge it off on this one spot. And if we do it there, I feel like it's, it's kind of nice and gradual and it sets us up nicely for going to the plateau and it isn't too steep to do that. So we're gonna go check it out anyway, and at least I'm hoping by the end of this episode, we'll have a nice clear path that goes straight from our track to the coal mine, and at least some rough foundation sitting on that, like just random pieces really thrown everywhere. It doesn't have to be neat or anything, but at least so we can understand what kind of grades we're looking at to get there. I find when I'm building paths, a lot of the time it's hard to tell if you're going up or down until you actually start putting the foundation down. And so I'm hoping that we'll be able to just lay out the foundation, you know, roughly and, you know, bridges, whatever. It doesn't really matter how it's done because then we'll go back, delete it, clean it all up, make it nice, make it straight and make it wonderful. But for now, uh, we're going to just head down there and see how it goes. We should be good for switches. I don't know, actually. We're just going to, we'll be fine for a bit. I'll we'll have to slow it down. I am actually, I'm really liking the Eureka now. As a train for, you know, just traveling, it's pretty good because it's nice and quick. And when you're only pulling its own tender, it doesn't seem to have too many problems. Unless, of course, the turns are too narrow, but we still have the Climax and the Class 70 to buy. So we still got to do that as well. Haven't done either of those. The Climax is obviously the smaller gear train and the Class 70 is the biggest of the, I guess, traditional locos, if you want to call them that. Um, and it, of course, has the same pulling power as the Heisler, supposedly, at least in terms of tractive effort. All right, so we're just going to coast now. We're going down here, so we're going to go down, and then we're going to go right at the Y instead of going left. So instead of going to the smelter, we're going to go across the iron mine, climb up that hill, which I believe has like a small 4 or 5% section, but it's only for a short little bit, so it shouldn't be too big a deal. And then after it gets to that first plateau, instead of going to the right, we're going to diverge and go left. And I think that'll be perfect. Um, we're just going to slow down a little bit. Yeah, there we go. That's that's good. But I think this will be perfect. So we'll get down to the bottom of this, turn right, go across, go up that little snaky valley section. And then there'll be a plateau up here. Eventually, I do want to make a line that comes down and goes along the waterfall cliff way in the background there. You can't really tell. Um, but there is a beautiful waterfall that I think would be nice. But I haven't actually checked out the other valley. I have no idea. This is the Iron Mine Valley, obviously. Look at that bridge. Look at how good that looks from this angle. Man, that looks so great. Looks like a proper bridge. I had a few comments, too, where people were like, why didn't you extend the wood all the way down? Because there are bridges that are really tall with wood all the way down. Uh, the wood extends as far as the game lets you. So you can only go that far. Uh, and if I wanted to make more wood, I would have to do some weird layering thing below it, which I guess we could do. But then you'd have, like, wood beams that overlap with each other and all that. Let's leave this. Let you keep coasting. We are faster. Perfect. 
Let's just flick this switch over like that. Excellent. Okay. And then I think we need to flick. No, that switch is good. Excellent. Okay, so we can keep going here. So this is the spot. And once we get onto this bridge, we can just go full reg. Now, there is a little bit of a climb here. I know the majority of this climb is 3%, maybe 4%, but it's not the end of the world. It's not like a really, really steep climb. Got that water right below us. Wonderful. Nice little river. I love the terrain in this game. I really hope they come out with other maps at some point that have different terrain sets, like desert and stuff would be cool as well. But e either way, I still love the mountainous. I love the difficulty that making mountainous trains you know, provides, right? You have to go up and down. You have to deal with the fact that the elevation isn't necessarily going to be handled. And then, of course, you have these, like, really tight passageways where you got to make these tight turns, but trains don't like making tight turns. So it's just a wonderful, wonderful thing to try. So you can see here the uh, the track increases in stiffness or in steepness just for this little, little section. Right when it gets off this foundation, it gets onto that. You can actually see the angle change, which apparently the Eureka can't do. Are you serious? Dude, you have no weight and you actually can't do this? What if I put sand down? Does that help? Are we actually are we actually not gonna make it? Alright, so the Eureka sucks. Um Are you are you for real? We're yeah, we're just okay. That's that's just that's just great. All right, well, we're never taking the Eureka up this path. Uh we'll just you know, we're just gonna leave it here. We're gonna walk. It's fine. You can see there's the waterfall. I really want to make a, a route that goes down along this ridge here, down the waterfall, and then goes down that ridge all the way to the smelter, because I feel like that would be cool. But anyway, the Eureka, I guess, will never run this track, so the Eureka won't be doing any trips to the coal mine anytime soon. But if we look at the map, we're now on this, like, first plateau section, which is actually the height of the valley. And so I think this height is perfect to just follow the valley all the way up to the coal mine. So, um, we're just gonna, honestly, we're just gonna take a walk. I think there's like a little dip there. So I wanna check out what that dip is. Probably like a river or something. And then we'll just follow that. So I'm thinking if we make like a Y section off here, this is nice and big, gives us a lot of space to make a Y. And eventually we'll need another, like maybe like a quad sort of thing here, like a quad directional doohickey I don't know, like two Ys, like a Y that goes this way and then one that goes that way so we can go over the waterfall as well. But that'll be, the waterfall path is like minor because, you know, we don't really need multiple routes to get to one spot necessarily. We just need at least one way to get there. But I'm thinking we stay up on this plateau. We could climb up to the higher plateau, but I, I really just want to kind of follow this dip, I think. Which, is it a river? It is a river. Oh, that's so cool. Okay, yeah, we definitely have to follow this river. Does this river- this river leads to the waterfall. That's sick, okay. So let's just follow the river as far as we can and see where we end up. Because if we can just- aw. Oh, if we could make a foundation, like, where it's just following the river the whole way to the coal mine, that would be a sweet route. It would be down in the valley, but I have a feeling, based on the map, that looking at the coal mine, it's probably up in the mountains. So I think we're gonna have to start climbing at some point, but I just want to see where this river goes, at least for now. And then we will come back and we'll lay out some foundation and do some deletion, because you can see already the height does change. Like, it's lower there, it's higher here. So we got to get an idea for what kind of grades we're dealing with the whole way through. I really want this track to follow this river. I think it would be a really, really cool thing to have a track that just runs as close to the river as we can. And, you know, it might be elevated in some spots, but it would just be neat. Because with the iron mine, like, you're, I guess you're kind of following a river, but it's way down in the valley. And I don't really want to necessarily build this track way up on the ridge there. I'd rather have it be more of a flatline track. But, of course, the Eureka can't even get here, so we might have to make a more gradual route. But if we made a path from the smelter that comes up to the waterfall, maybe we could make it at 3%, and the Eureka would have to go down to the smelter first before it comes back up. But I mean, if you're going all the way to the coal mine, is that really, it's not really that much of a detour considering the majority of your trip is just spent on this giant valley. We're like barely halfway, if at all, from where we started. So it's, it's gonna be a long trek. But look, there is a plateau up there. You can see it on the map. And I'm wondering if that's the plateau that we need to be at to be at the height of the, the coal mine. If we look, it's, it's way up there. It'd be like somewhere along that ridge. It's crazy. 
You know, judging by how much this river twists and turns, like, look at this. Look at this S-bend here. And then we've got another S-bend coming up here. We're, uh, like, I don't know, two-thirds, three-quarters of the way there. Something like that. Two-thirds, I guess. But judging by all these, like, curves and stuff, I think we're gonna actually have to, uh, you know, possibly make some bridges. Like, have a bridge, a bridge, a bridge. Also, does water flow uphill here? Looks like water flows uphill. Looks like there is one section here where water flows... That is interesting. It might, it might be an optical illusion. It honestly might be my eyes playing tricks on me. But I feel like... I feel like... Oh, me... I don't know. I don't know, you guys can be the judge. Alright, we're finally getting into the final valley area here. This little basin. Um, so straight ahead should be the coal mine. I have a feeling it's gonna be like up in the cliff. I hope it's at this level. If it's at this level, it would be awesome. But I have a feeling based on the text, it's like up in the cliff. Although I I honestly don't know. Um, but yeah, we'd have to cross the river here potentially. It's a really nice little valley though. It's nice and flat. Can you imagine? We could just build a bridge. If like straight in the direction that arrow's pointing, if we went straight over that ridge and then like turn through that valley, we could make it to the iron mine. But I remember behind the iron mine, there's like a relatively steep cliff. So I don't think you could very easily get something, um, you know, get get a train over there and then back down to the iron mine. I think you have to come this long way. I also think the coal mine is up on that freaking cliff up there. Is it? It, it definitely is, right? Oh man, it totally is. Alright, we gotta get up to that cliff. There's no real easy way. What is this? This looks pretty natural. Maybe they want you to come through this valley and then turn around and come up this ramp. This looks like a nice natural ramp to get up. Oh, I see it. I see a platform. I see some wood. I think we got to go down this this route right there. I think that's where we need to come in. And then possibly loop around at the coal mine itself and then go back down the same way we came up. But here we go. We're at the coal mine. Okay. This looks nice. Well, I don't even know what the coal mine takes. Probably the same as the iron mine, right? Like beams and planks or whatever. Beams? Yeah. And planks? No. Beams and rails. Oh. So we do need the smelter, which we have, which is good. So we could make coal. So we have to do rail deliveries. Okay. Oh, and there's another waterfall over there. That's amazing. All right. So I think the best thing is probably to start here and work our way down. So the train would be on this side. And if we went down from here, what's in this direction? We're like, we're really high up compared to that valley. I do want to run through the bottom of that valley, but this is actually a lot of space here though to turn around if we had to. Like we could easily turn, come around here and loop back to the way we came. I'm assuming this might just be a straight cliff. So unless we build some crazy big bridge. Yeah, no, this is, this is just a, that's a, there's no way we're getting a train down that. No, unless we do some, like, crazy bridge work, which I don't really feel like doing. And then this is a pretty... Is it steep here or is it shallow here? No, I think this is also... Yeah, this is also just basically a straight drop. We could kind of, like, I guess you could bridge it down to this level. Yeah, we could actually. And then bridge it down some more. It's kind of like stepped down and then like loop maybe around the left and then end up at the far. We could do that. End up somewhere down there by the bottom of the waterfall. That's a cool looking waterfall. Yeah, I guess we could come down this way if we wanted to. Just make some smooth bridges. Probably wouldn't even need to be that steep because you got lots of space. And then we get down to the valley at the bottom of the river by the waterfall. And then go all the way along the river back to the start. Let's check out the other direction first, but I have a feeling that this might actually be the easier direction to go. The other direction might be a little more difficult. We're still going to have to loop around at the coal mine. I don't want to do the same thing we did at the iron mine necessarily, where we have two tracks. I'd rather just have one comes into the coal mine, does like a circle at the coal mine, loops around, you switch back onto the same line you came in, and you leave that way. It's a little less friendly for people, but we could eventually run two lines next to the river instead of one line and have that whole section double tracked if we wanted people or just do like passing lanes and stuff or you could you know go off onto a passing lane pass somebody and come back on there is lots of flat space here though to turn around which is good um and it seems like there's a lot of flat space on this side to turn around well not as much in this direction 
but there's still some. You could come forward here. Okay, let's check out this way. There was that ramp up section, so maybe that'll help us. All right, so if we come down this way, obviously we'd follow this little nice little groove. Looks kind of smooth. See, this looks kind of like that Iron Mine Pass where it seems almost intentional. Sort of why I'm inclined to think that we're supposed to take it. Yeah, look at, look at how smooth... Oh, man, this is definitely the way to go. Keep following that. This is a little aggressive of a turn, but we could work that out. Keep going down this way. See, if you look at the map... Um, wait, what? We're in the... Okay, we're in the mountains now. That's interesting. I think we're still going down, though. And then here... Oh, we're just, we're just screwed. We get to here, and it's just... Oh no, you go across. Okay, there's a, there's a cutout there. Okay, yeah, this seems very intentional. This seems like it's the way we should be going. Yeah, to this cutout. And then this, I'm assuming we loop around the whole edge of this. Oh, this looks, this looks, this would be a really cool run. Would actually be a really, really cool run. Yeah, you know what? We're going to start tracing this. We're going to start doing this with some foundation and then delete some trees. Uh, I have a feeling this is the place we need to be. And then, uh, you know, we'll get down to that point over there. That side over there looks lower than where we are here, which is good. And then I think it just keeps going down that way. You can kind of see like a ridge there, maybe. So I'm pretty sure this is the way that we're supposed to get up there. And then at the top of the coal mine, we'll build a loop and turn around. And there's more space on the other side to build a loop. So you'd pull through, turn around with the loop, and then come back. And I think this will be perfect. All right, so we're going to start... Um, we might as well start deleting some trees, because that's going to be required. So we'll just delete a bunch of trees back here. Work our way over to the coal mine. Some of you might have noticed it doesn't seem to actually cost money anymore when you delete trees, which is cool. Um, uh, take a look at the money. Get experience. Doesn't cost you any money. Kind of nice. If you want to clear-cut your whole map, you could do it for free. Which, I don't know if you'd want to, but, you know, I, I think it's actually a decent feature. It didn't seem necessary to charge you for trees, like $2 a tree or whatever, because, I mean, there's so many trees on the map, like, what are you gonna, you know, building with trees in the way is just kind of a pain in the butt. Um, so here we go, we're gonna just start with some basic foundation. Again, this is all gonna get deleted when we go to make tracks, so I'm not really worried about making this look precise or anything. Um, but we'll start, you know, just get a, a relatively decent height, something like that. And this is, of course, just for us to sort of be able to judge what heights we'll have to be at what kind of crazy turns we'll have to be at, and of course, you know, what mainly what trees we'll have to delete. So I think we can start coming down now at 1%, probably even more than that, 2%. Yeah, I think 2%. Does that get too low? Eh, it does get a little low. Let's go down at 1% for a bit. Now 2%. There we go, something like this. And now probably 3% for pretty much the whole trip. I don't really want to go above 3% if we don't have to. But let's see if this is possible. We're already much higher up off the ground than I would like. And this is going to be, that's going to be a tight turn there. Uh, obviously not as tight as I just made it, but that is going to be a tight turn. And actually that's not bad. This is 3% and this shallows out kind of nicely. So that'll, that'll do great. We'll just keep going this way, something like this. Again, we're just marking the path. I'm, I'm really not too worried about how precise this is or how good it looks, as long as it marks the path nicely. 2%, uh, 1%, right, 0%, and then here we're going to have to bridge across. So like that, let's delete all the trees on this section. Perfect. This is going to take a while, but I think once we get down to the valley, following the river back is going to be relatively easy. We just need to clear the trees because the river is pretty much flat the majority of the distance. The one thing that's interesting too is the coal mine actually does require smelter products. It requires wood products, beams, and it requires rails, which means we are going to have to eventually go to the smelter before we go to the coal mine, which if we put the the Y section off to the coal mine where I have it now at the plateau to the iron mine, you could still do that, but it would make sense to have a direct line from the smelter that goes up past that little waterfall and then loops up to the coal mine itself. So that's, you know, that's a plan for another day as well. Eventually we're gonna have lines just going absolutely everywhere, but just based on the supply and demand of this, um, you'd have to go down to the smelter anyway. And so if you're going down to the smelter, you might as well go straight from the smelter to the coal mine. You bring your lumber that you need down to the smelter, you pick up the rails, and then you bring both the lumber and the rails up to here. Uh, so that's good enough for now. 
nice clean path. This would, we'd obviously, we're going to smooth this out. We'd probably make this turn go a little wider, come up, but you, you get the idea. It at least gives us a rough layout. And this is all 3%, which is perfect. This looks cool already. I kind of wish I had a horse and didn't have to, you know, sprint it, but it is what it is. All right, and then from here, we bridge across. So we're just going to delete these trees in this little valley. Because... Perfect. All right, and then we'll just make a bridge from the other side. And go across to this side. Again, rough bridges. I'm going to keep saying that, but, you know, whatever. Just, there we go. It doesn't really matter. Just to check the heights. I found when I was doing the Iron Mine Pass, especially, like, the smoother side, if I don't have, you know, foundation and stuff to check the heights, it's very difficult to judge what kind of elevation you're going up and down. Uh, it's not like Minecraft. You don't have that little indicator to tell you what coordinates you're at, which would be super convenient. Um, but we don't have... Can you, can you move, tree? No, there we go. Perfect. All right, so... I think now we keep going down at 3%. Oh, that goes into the ground already if we go down at 3%. Okay, we don't need to go down at 3%. Let's uh, demolish this groundwork. Come off the bridge. Of course, this is going to need to, you know, come off the bridge and then turn right away. But, again, we'll figure that out later. 2% maybe? 2% looks pretty good. Wow, it still gets low into the ground. 1%? Doesn't matter. We can smooth this out. The fact is it's less than 3, which is great. And now we need to go down to, like, 3 again. Three might be too much here. We might hit the ground again. Oh no! It's it's so deceptive how how sloped the ground actually is. It's very hard to tell. Oh, that's into the ground though. All right, let's go. Whatever, two percent, something like that. Be able to make this a lot more gradual when the time comes to actually build it for real. Still only two percent. Perfect. Just loop this. This is a terribly tight corner, which we would never do. Look at you got these like little bumps where it looks deceptive of how high the foundation is. When we actually do this for real, I'll, I'll try and hug the ground as close as possible. Obviously, that's what I like to do with all my rails. Um, but again, we're just trying to check, make sure we're not totally screwed on the heights. All right, we're basically at flat ground here. We can go to like zero percent. So let's just do that. Finish that piece off for now. Do some more logging to clean up this section of the path. I know it might seem ridiculous, but this is actually how I build all my rails. I usually will go through and do an initial groundwork assessment, as I like to call it, and just, you know, figure out the route, delete the trees, and then I'll go back through the deleted tree path and smooth everything out and make the final, you know, final set of groundwork with the final rails and all that. And it's like twice as long, but the end results are really, really good because you have some nice smooth tracks that you know, follow some really clean lines. Otherwise, you end up with, like, track where you're like, oh, well, I had to make this last-minute correction, and I'd rather do the corrections beforehand than after the track is placed, if that makes any sense. All right, perfect. All done, except for you. Get out of here. Excellent. This looks so cool, too. All the way from here to there. Apparently, I missed this tree. It's fine. Excellent, but yeah, I, I really like this already. It's definitely a detour. Like, if you look, we're going, like, way into the mountains here just to follow this path all the way down to get to that valley. But I think it'll be perfect. I think we'll come out right at that little mouth of the valley on the left side um, north of the coal mine. I think that's what's going to happen based on this track. But this just seems too, like, intentional. It's one of those tracks just like the Iron Mine track where it's like it's like a perfectly gradual ridge that just seems so intentional we have to use it. Okay, continuing on. Variable groundwork. Uh, down 2%, maybe? No, 2% still a little low. Okay, 1%. There we go. This is a very, very gradual hill. It's kind of nice. 1% still. Seems like we're keeping a good height above the ground. 1 per... Oh my goodness. I don't even know where this goes. This is great. We're just following the ridge. Who cares where it goes? This is unbelievably smooth. Look at this. This is 1% down the whole time, and yet it's, like, keeping the same distance off the ground level. It's almost like, I don't know, it's like two brick layers off the ground. It's actually kind of perfect. It's almost like it was uh, purposely done at 1%. I like that. That's good, though. There is definitely a 3% section towards the end, but that should be easy enough for us to handle with a train. And this just looks so cool. Okay, we can go down 2% now. 
perfect. I don't know where we're ending up here. Uh, hold on a minute. Let's just, um, should I pause? Maybe, and just take a look at where we need to go. Yeah, you know what, let's just keep going. Just following this ridge here. But I'm thinking, oh yeah, I think we just gotta keep going to the right here. Yeah, just this way. Obviously we'll have to make this turn nice and smooth in the future. Look crazy, we're about to hit the ground again. Is there even a passage? Oh, there is a passageway through there. Oh, I should have gone. Okay, hold on. Let's go back a little bit. I think I need to go a little closer to that ridge line on that side because it looks like there's a groove that goes through there if we were close to that ridge. So let's just move this over a little bit more. All right, so let's continue it from here. And then if we go straight this way, still down at 2%, right? And then we get closer to this ridge line. There we go, perfect. And we're still gonna be down at 2%, but this ridge, yeah, we follow that instead. Excellent. There we go, and now it sets it up nicely to go down this little path. We're almost touching the ground again, that's crazy. Oh, that is, like, touching the ground. You can barely see it sticking out. Okay, let's go 1%, so it sticks up again. And then 1%, and then probably... And then we follow this ridge, I guess. 2% down again. How far are we? Um, we're down... Okay, I don't even know. I don't even think we're that close. Because we're still way above the valley. Like, the valley is, is down there. Like, way down there. So, I don't, I don't know. This is a huge detour that might not actually pay off. Oh wow, this is actually zero for a bit. That's crazy. Okay. I think we follow this ridge line though. I think that's exactly what we're supposed to do. And by ridge line, I think we're supposed to be actually crossing over and going on that. Yeah. I think, I think, hold on. I think we screwed up again. I'm trying to do this whole section in one piece just because it's not as obvious where we have to go. And obviously I don't want to delete a whole ton of trees and then realize we needed those trees back. But I think here we're supposed to stick to this right side ridge instead. Alright, so we'll just bring this all the way forward from there. At like, I don't know, zero, whatever. Down one, one percent, that's good enough. Now probably two... Okay. Now even it seems like even three. Perfect. Yeah, this looks this looks a lot better. Delete that a little bit. We're apparently too low. It, it, this is a really cool path. Like has a lot of sections that flatten out. Yeah, this looks intentional though, 100 percent Alright, let's go. This is gonna be steep, 3% for sure. And it's still gonna gain a little bit of height, but that's okay. Yeah, that looks like we're back on the intentional path. I think this is where we actually tried to climb up initially. Oh my god, this gets really high up, but it's okay. 3%. Yeah, that's... that's we'll definitely keep this at 3. We'll probably hug the mountain when we build this for real. Just to make it look a little bit better. But I don't want to go 4% just for the purposes of keeping it closer to the ground. Because we do have a lot of space in the valley to, you know, smooth the ramp out, and it would make more sense to stay up as high as possible so that the, uh, the grade is a lot shallower for the, you know, ideally the Class 70. I don't think the Eureka is getting up here anytime soon based on its performance on that 4% grade without any freaking load on it. This looks good, though. Are we, we're down at the valley height now, right? 3%, 3%, 3%, Boom. Oh my goodness. Look at that. And then we go to zero. And there's the river. Holy cow. We made it. Okay, sick. Is that right? That's the river? We're down in the valley? And then we just gotta go across the river? And... Follow the river all the way back. Alright, let's clear these trees out. This is gonna be awesome. It's kinda crazy that we need to get up to that ridge. And to get up to that ridge, we have to do this crazy detour. But this is actually going to work. And then we just gotta blaze the rest of the trail all the way back. Alright, perfect. That's the last of the trees. This actually took a lot longer than I thought it would. Mainly because I didn't think we'd have to actually go all the way up to get to the coal mine. I mean, it kind of makes sense. The text is sort of in the mountains. 
Um, but this is one heck of a detour. Like, look at that. There's rail down there. Like, there's foundation down there. And we just keep climbing all the way up. So I think what we're going to do is actually save the uh, the next part, like, going down the valley for the next episode. Um, I don't know if I'm going to do this in two parts or three. I was hoping to get it done in two, but it's actually a much longer route than I thought. But either way, then the next part is really easy. We just have to follow the river all the way up. So I might do foundation and rail at the same time for that. But this was definitely the hardest trailblazing part that we had to do. Like getting up this mountain was really, really difficult. The rest is going to be easy simply because the river is already there and there's no way that river goes up at any steeper than 3% for any one section so we'll probably be able to do that in one episode no issue but for now what i wanted to do just to sort of finalize this episode is i'm going to go to the very top and then we're going to walk all the way down and time lapse it so it'll look wonderful and you can get an idea for what this route is actually going to be it's very long like this one section just to get up to the coal mine from the bottom of the valley is incredibly long and it's gonna be super fun to run trains up it but uh yeah we need to we need to smooth out all this foundation first and of course, we have to get here. So I think we'll probably in the next episode make our way to the valley or I might do some other track improvements. Of course, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below and, uh, you know, let me know what you want to see in the next episode. But we definitely, the coal mine is going to be attached relatively soon here. I'm really excited for it. And then, of course, we'll be able to start running coal products because I'm pretty sure, I haven't checked yet, but I think the Ironworks takes coal and iron products. And so we're going to need coal already working in order to uh, make that happen. But here we go. We're up at the top. I'm going to try and keep my camera as steady as possible. And we're going to go run all the way from the top of the coal mine down to the valley. Here we go. Alrighty, boom, right back at the river. Perfect. And then we'll probably cross right here and then follow along all the way back from here up to that section where the iron ore mine meets it, which is like way up almost by the smelter. But either way, it is all flat relatively if we stay in the valley next to the river. So I think that's just perfect. But yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. A little bit of a trailblazing episode. Let me know what you guys think if that's something you want. Normally I do this kind of stuff off camera, but I figured since the coal mine was such a long trip, I might as well show you guys the process. If you want to see more of that kind of thing, let me know if you want me to just like do it off camera and then be like, hey, here's my brand new line that took me like 12 hours to build. Then let me know in the comments down below as well. Um, you know, obviously we're, we're through 
the hardest part of this, I think, which is the climb to the coal mine, but we still have a long way to go. Like, we still gotta do foundation and stuff all the way back to where the track is, but I might combine that and do it with the track since it's mostly flat, uh, and then rebuild this whole foundation part, because obviously this is just the rough cut. But yeah, let me know what you guys think. Make sure, of course, you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and we'll see y'all next time.